All right, let's talk about the elbow joint and specifically brachial muscles. In this tutorial, we'll describe the anterior and posterior brachial muscles, including actions and innervations. So to start, what are these brachial muscles? There's four of them, biceps, corcobrachialis, brachialis, and triceps brachii. And these four muscles are divided into anterior muscles because they're on the front of the brachium. And these muscles have the following things in common. They flex the elbow joint and they're innervated by the MC nerve, abbreviation for musculocutaneous nerve. Also, the last of the four is located on the back of the brachium, the posterior brachial muscle. There's one of them, it's the triceps, and this triceps muscle extends the elbow, and it's innervated by the radial nerve. So there we have basically this entire tutorial summed up right there. Shing, that's what you need to know. So to start, let's talk about the biceps brachii muscle. It gets its name. Uh, because this biceps brachii muscle has bi or two seps heads on the brachii brachium or arm and it's a muscle hence the name biceps brachii muscle one of those heads is the long head the long head gets its name because it's longer than the short huzzah so there we've got the supraglenoid tubercle and the glenoid labrum is the origin and then this long tendon goes over the top of the head of the humerus and then down the intertubercular groove there. But because it's the long head of the biceps that goes through the groove, it's also called the bicipital groove. Uh, you'll often hear it called that. And then the muscle belly comes all the way down to the arm. And then the short head is going to arise from the coracoid process along with the corcobrachialis and the, sh and the pec minor. But the short head of the biceps comes all the way down and then joins with the belly of the long head and they form wonder twin powers and they come down and they attach to the radial tuberosity of the radius, which is located on its medial surface, a little bit more deep. Um, so there's our biceps brachii. Now recall that the elbow joint in which this biceps uh, crosses has two joints. It has a hinge joint, which flexes and extends, and a pivot joint, which pronates and supinates. And so if we see this hinge joint like this, we see that there is flexion and extension, but there's flexion that occurs. And so when we look at the biceps brachii muscle and uh, superimpose it uh, on the human body that we see there's our biceps and then we have a tendon that goes up to the uh, scapula and another tendon that goes down to the radial tuberosity. So when this muscle contracts, shing, it's going to flex or bend the elbow because it crosses vertically in front of the elbow. It's going to flex that joint, elbow flexion from here to there. Now, recall that the elbow joint has also the pivot joint, which helps to pronate and supinate, pronate and supinate that elbow joint. So when your hand is in the prone position, let's look at how the biceps brachii muscle acts upon the radius there. Here's our biceps tendon, um, belly, and then in gray, there's the tendon. And see how the tendon, now watch the radial tuberosity. You see in dotted line, that's where the tendon then goes deep into that area where the radial tuberosity is. So when this biceps muscle contracts, it pivots, watch, pivots the radius over into the supine position, or in other words, supination. The biceps is the principal supinator of the uh, pivot joint. So there's our anterior muscles. So we just take, uh, that's the biceps brachii muscle, sorry. We take the biceps brachii, get it out of the way, and one of the deeper muscles is the corcobrachialis. It gets its name because it attaches from the corcoid process down to the humerus or brachium. Don't worry about the actions of this muscle. It helps to adduct the humerus at the glenohumeral joint and flex it. But it's a small muscle. It doesn't have a whole lot of strength or power. But it does have a clinically significant feature, and that is where the nerve goes through it. So there's our... Um, brachial plexus. And there we have our musculocutaneous nerve in orange. And as this musculocutaneous nerve courses through the axilla and comes in contact with the corcobrachialis muscle, it courses through the belly of the corcobrachialis and then exits the other end and then courses out to innervate the biceps brachialis and becomes the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So the key to this is right there where that musculocutaneous nerve courses through the belly of the corcobrachialis. Okay, so now let's go from corcobrachialis to the brachialis muscle. It gets its name because it attaches to the brachium or to the humerus, and then the muscle continues down to insert on the coronoid process of the ulna, right in that proximal part. And so because this brachialis muscle crosses vertically in front of the elbow joint, 
it will also flex that elbow joint in that fashion. Brachialis, elbow flexion. Okay, so we've done the anterior brachial muscles. Now let's turn the arm over and look at the posterior brachial muscle, which is the triceps brachii muscle. And uh, this arises from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and the proximal for the lateral head and distal medial head of the triceps and then inserts on the olecranon process of the ulna. And that is your po bony sticky outy on your elbow. It's what you're resting on the table right now. And so recall there's our hinge joint, which extends flexion, extension of this joint. But to go from this position to this position, Really, gravity helps us do that. So if you want to test elbow extension, you either have to do this against resistance or work against gravity like that. So moving the ulna um, when you extend the elbow against gravity. And so when we now take a look at the triceps brachii muscle in the body, and there we have the triceps muscle in the back of the humerus and a tendon coming up to the scapula and humerus and another tendon going to the olecranon process. So when the triceps contracts, there we go. There we have elbow extension in that fashion. Elbow extension. Shing. There we go. Okay, so what are anterior brachial muscles? They're innervation. So there's the muscular cutaneous nerve will innervate all three of those muscles in the front of the brachium. Biceps, coracobrachialis, brachialis. It's the muscular cutaneous nerve, which comes from C5, C6, and C7. Now notice that the C6 level is much thicker and that you see C6 is bolded is to demonstrate that this six, C6 myotome is the big one that will flex the elbow. So as this muscular cutaneous nerve hits the coracobrachialis, it goes through and innervates those three muscles and exits the other end as the muscular cut uh, lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Okay, so now the posterior brachial muscle innervation is done by the radial nerve. It'll innervate our triceps brachii. Now the radial nerve gets contributions from all levels, but the big one is from C7. That's the principal level. Even though C5 and C6 and C8 and T1 could contribute, C7 is that principal level of the C7 myotome, which will extend the elbow or straighten your elbow. Something I do want to mention about this is some uh, uh, topography of this radial nerve. So see that radial nerve coursing and course is deep to that triceps in this fashion. So if we ghost all the way through, so we see this radial nerve right there, not so much there or there, but right there where that radial nerve is abutting against the posterior mid humeral shaft. And there's that little groove called the radial groove or spiral groove. Um, if there's a mid humeral fracture, because that radial nerve is snug as a bug in a rug against the back of that and tethered against the back of the humerus, a mid humeral fracture uh, there's a, a much higher risk of damaging that radial nerve. Okay, so in a nutshell, there we have our brachial muscles. Three anterior, one posterior. Anterior flex the elbow and innervated by the muscular cutaneous nerve. The triceps or posterior muscle extends the elbow and is innervated by the radial nerve. And there we've got brachial muscles.